and would move forward with a question before I yield time to myself as I'm next in line to speak. Um, friends, at the September 21st hearing, I presented the CEOs of the largest U.S. banks with information on their connections to slavery. I asked if they'd done enough to atone for their connectivity to slavery, to which all indicated they had. However, thereafter, I followed up and asked them if they had and would commit to preparing an atonement plan. And I asked if they would raise their hands if they were prepared to submit an atonement plan. These are the persons present, and none, not one, raised a hand. I mention this because, you may move it away. I mention this because I think the point that has been made today by several members, including Mr. Garcia, uh, Ms. Beatty, who is not here, uh, and Ms. Garcia, who's here, Mr. Garcia, Ms. Garcia, and members of the panel, including Dr. Darity, uh, the, the notion that we will be able to resolve this by simply having these very wealthy businesses simply cooperate, uh, which is what I would like to see, doesn't seem to be manifesting itself. I just don't see that happening in the current circumstance that we're dealing with. So given that it doesn't, uh, I have a, um, a bill that I filed as a placeholder, and this bill would simply give us the opportunity to amend it and later on file an additional bill that would uh, allow us to move forward with uh, the kind of bill that you've been discussing and calling to my attention. It would be H.R. 9337 that's been filed, and it requires the Securities and Exchange Act um, to allow us to have racial audits, racial equity audits. Uh, I think that this is a genesis, but I think there's much more that we need to do. So what I'd like to do is ask uh, Dr. Darity about your desire and belief that we can have these endowments funded by these institutions. Uh, I've had the honor of working with you, Dr. Darity, and I believe you've presented a, a a plan, a sort of outline as to how this can be accomplished. So would you take just a moment, please, and explain how you would have this take place as it relates to the financial institutions? I think I'd like to talk about a specific example, which is uh, the case of J.P. Morgan Chase that had uh, two subsidiaries that were based in the state of Louisiana. And uh, I performed an exercise of examining the uh, the historically black colleges and universities in the state of, of Louisiana and match them with peer institutions. Uh, so for example, I've matched Dillard University with Tulane University. Uh, I matched uh, Southern University uh, with uh, Louisiana State University and looked at the per student differentials in Mr. endowments. Dr. Doherty, I'm going to, to ask that you suspend for just a moment because the time for Ms. Williams has expired. Uh, I now recognize myself for five minutes and would ask that you continue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so so uh, I came up with a calculation of the amount that would be required to bring the endowments of the historically black colleges and universities in Louisiana on par with their peer uh, historically white institutions. And uh, if I recall correctly, the total amount was not uh, particularly staggering relative to J.P. Morgan Chase's assets, which are now, I believe, in excess of $3 trillion. Uh, it's interesting that it was mentioned earlier that they had set aside a fund for $5 million. Uh, I think that that's a, a very, very uh, small uh, allotment given the scale of their resources. Thank you. Uh, let me move to another area of great concern for me. Um, and the chairwoman mentioned this in her uh, questioning. And that is, why have we not moved along to a greater extent in trying to get this uh, reparations and atonement? I, I separate the two 
get this done. Um, I find that many people are ashamed of being associated with the title slave. Uh, I, I consider myself uh, a proud, proud uh, ancestor, uh, proud to be associated with my ancestors who are slaves. Uh, I think that uh, that's a part of my heritage. They built the country to a certain extent. They are the foundational mothers and fathers of this country. Uh, the Capitol building, um, you know, the, at Yale, at uh, Harvard University, they've constructed facilities there. Uh, and I'm very proud to be uh, a, a descendant of the people who built the country. But many are not. So I'm asking now, how is it that you think we can get beyond this being the perfect victims, the persons who are victims yet ashamed to acknowledge that we are associated with an institution that we did not create, but that has caused us great harm over the centuries, not over the years, but over the centuries. Who would like to uh, give me some assistance? Yes, uh, if you'll announce your name and speak, please. Thank you, it's uh, Dania Francis. Um, I think a, an important aspect is education. Right? We are afraid of teaching the history of this country um, in a way that uh, erases uh, all of these things that, that uh, we don't want to see, right? Um, at the university, let, let, me interrupt. I, let me interrupt for just a moment because uh, you've gone exactly where I'd like you to go. Now, in Texas, uh, we are making it almost impossible to teach this type of history because uh, it's being labeled uh, as something that um, is antithetical to the best interests of children. Uh, are you familiar with what I speak of? Okay, well, you may continue, please. How do yes, we address sir. it? Absolutely. And so I think it's a, um, a, a, a local problem that um, becomes national, and we need to have solutions that address it locally as well. Right. So we need to be in those school board meetings. We need to um, uh, mobilize um, and try to take back right, some of the control over um, uh, the curriculum in spaces. They're trying to deny what is the documented history uh, of the country. And so um, uh, I think it's a, uh, a, a local um, problem that we have to address. There has to be a grassroots effort. Um, in order to, to avoid the larger national problem that it's becoming. Thank you. Finally, I'd like to ask each of you, if you would, to um, give me a yes or no answer to this question. Uh, this committee has jurisdiction over financial institutions. Do you believe that we should um, develop legislation that would um, have an impact on financial institutions uh, should they fail to engage in atonement? And I'll leave it at impact as opposed to uh, the type of impact. We'll just say impact for now. So let's start with uh, Dr. Darity Jr. Uh, your thoughts, yes or no, should we? Yes. Dr. Francis? Yes. Uh, Dr. Roberts? Yes. Um, Ms. Uh, Seth Rockman? Yes. Mr. And finally, um, Ms. Sarah Fetterman. Yes. All persons having agreed, I think that you have given us reason to move forward with legislation. And I will encourage my friends who have addressed this issue today to uh, help me with the legislation, both Mr. and Ms. Garcia. Uh, Ms. Beatty has already been involved with this. And let's see if we can come up with legislation that will I miss Williams as well, that will help us to encourage our financial institutions to atone for their connections to slavery that have benefited them over the years. I thank all of you for appearing today.